Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Revelation 21, verse 5. The Apostle John's book of Revelation comes to an end with this exciting statement. God promises his people whose lives are being ripped apart by persecution that he is in the business of redeeming and making everything whole again, even the most broken and dire of circumstances. He doesn't give specifics in this verse, but he paints this beautiful, mysterious, fascinating, and hopeful picture of humanity and a world restored. I love this passage. As a follower of Jesus, this is the reason that I can have hope in the midst of the hard times. A few weeks ago, though, this passage showed up in my devotional book, and God poked at me a little bit. Specifically, he poked at my definition of new. You see, usually when I read this passage, my brain hears new and thinks better. And that's not a bad thing. It is true. But the definition of new, if you look it up, is also different, changed, unfamiliar, and unknown. At first, God's promise of making something new has not always felt or looked better to me. In fact, at first, it has usually felt a little bit uncomfortable. I know that during this pandemic, I have often wished that everything would return to normal. But if I'm honest with myself, my real hope is that the different, unknown, and unfamiliar circumstances would be over. I want to skip over that unpleasantness and get to the part where everything is better. But that discomfort is simply my limited human imagination adjusting to God's reality. The more uncomfortable I am, the more I might be holding on tightly to my vision for my life. If I really trust that God is good and that he knows what he is doing, then I'm more willing to follow his lead, trust the process, and open my imagination to the future he envisions for me and the world around me. Hindsight is 2020, right? How many times throughout scripture did God's making things new look very different than people expected or even wanted? Perhaps the greatest case in point is Jesus. God's people had clung to God's promise for generations that he would send a Messiah, someone to save them. And as a people group that had been repeatedly conquered by their enemies, they hoped this promise meant a military leader who would free them. This was the new and better they imagined, prayed for, and prepared for. But God's new and better was Jesus. Jesus who didn't kick out the Roman occupation, but he did make it possible for God to come live in and with them again for the first time since the Garden of Eden. Their world would drastically change for the better following Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. But it changed in a way they could have never imagined, never planned for, and certainly never controlled. I don't want to miss out on the new thing that God desires to do by limiting him to what I know, what I want, and what I understand. My prayer lately has been that I could learn to get comfortable with the different, the unfamiliar, and the unknown. I pray that my trust in him will not falter, that my patience will multiply, and that my hope and imagination for the future will become in tune with his. Will you join me in praying this prayer? Lord, thank you for being a God beyond our imagining or understanding. Fill us with trust, and your holy imagination. Amen.